glucose estimation instruments or simply put a glucose meter is a device used to measure the blood concentration of glucose. In this podcast, we will learn about the important aspects of blood glucose estimation. We will begin with the relevance of blood sugar monitoring in neonates and proceed to the various methods by which blood glucose can be estimated. The next section will deal with the components of glucose estimating instruments and the method of blood glucose estimation. Further on, we will learn the possible sources of error while measuring the blood glucose the limitations of glucose meter and the salient points in instrument care. Hyperglycemia that is low blood glucose as well as hyperglycemia that is high blood glucose values are commonly encountered in neonates. There is evidence linking both these entities to detrimental neuromotor outcomes. Laboratory methods usually take 2 to 3 hours before the test results are available. This delay may not be acceptable in the care of newborns and hence the need for point of care glucose testing which provides rapid results with small sample volumes avoiding delay in modification of clinical care. There are two methods of glucose estimation. One is the reductiometric method and the other is enzymatic method. The reductiometric methods are based on the reducing property of sugars. They need an alkaline medium and heat as catalyst. However, these methods have a low specificity for glucose and are obsolete currently. On the other hand, enzymatic methods are based on enzymatic reactions utilizing glucose as substrate. They need enzyme as a catalyst. These methods have a high specificity for glucose and they are the main mode of glucose estimation currently. The bedside simplest method uses reagent strips impregnated with the enzymes glucose oxidase, peroxidase and a chromogenic substance which on reaction with glucose in the blood changes color. The shade and intensity of color produced is proportional to the amount of blood glucose. This color is to be compared to the reference chart provided on the bottle label to estimate the blood glucose. Examples of such photometric strips are the dextrose sticks, the glucose sticks and the hemoglucotest. The other method is reading these photometric strips using reflectance meters rather than the naked eye. Example is sure step glucometer by LiScan. The test strip available with it has a test square where the blood is applied, a white pad which absorbs the excess blood that may spill over and a confirmation dot on the back which turns completely blue if adequate blood has been applied. Once the glucose in blood reacts with the impregnated chemical reagents in the photometric strips, a blue color is formed. A beam of light is shown onto this blue color. The darker the blue, the higher is the blood glucose and lesser is the light reflected. The reflectance meters read this reflected light and hence give a blood glucose value. This circumvents the issue of inter-observer variation in matching color as well as the variability in color match due to different amount and color of lightning in the environment. Having discussed the principles and the methods of glucose estimation, we shall now learn about the components of the glucose monitoring system, namely the test strips, the glucometer and the control solution. Certain salient points are to be remembered while using these test strips. Each time you open a new batch of strips, you will need to match the code on the test strip wire to that on the meter. A miscoded meter can give readings that are different by as much as 43%. Coding is not difficult to do, usually involving placing one of the new strips in the meter and holding down a single button until the displayed code in the window matches the one on the wire. Improper storage and handling of strips may lead to inaccurate results. Strips should therefore be stored in a cool, dark, humid-free environment. Test strips have an expiry date written on the bottle. 
Also, once opened, the date of opening the bottle should be written on it. Three to four months from this date would be the discard date. Do not use the test strips beyond the expiry or discard date to avoid inaccurate results. Strips also operate over different temperature ranges. This is important if you live in a region which has extremes of temperature. For example, one touch ultra strips function over 6 to 40 degrees Celsius, whereas one touch basic strip functions over 15 to 35 degrees Celsius. A general range is 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Thus, we should keep in mind the following in test strip care. What should we do? Store the strips in a cool, dry, dark place at a temperature less than 25 degrees Celsius. Replace the bottle cap tightly after removing the test strip. Check the color of the strip before use. Use the strip immediately after taking out of the bottle. What should we not do? Do not refrigerate, freeze or place at temperature more than 30 degrees Celsius or expose to light. Do not expose to air or moisture or to hydrogen peroxide or bleach fumes. In addition, one should not alter or cut the strips in any way. The second component of the glucose monitoring system is the glucose meter. Its parts include the strip guide where the test strip is inserted, the display screen which shows the test results, simple messages like the error messages, the set date time and various symbols like a battery sign for low battery. The control button is used to set the code, the date, time and review test results in memory. The memory button is used to set the memory mode to assess the previous results. The data port which can be used to transfer the data to the computer via data cable. Most glucometers run on either a 3 volt lithium battery or triple A alkaline battery. Glucometers usually are the size of a palm of a hand. Most glucometers in use require 0.3 to 1 microliter of blood for the test. Test time refers to how long the meter takes to give a result after you put in the strip. The earliest glucometers used to take a whole minute to give the result but the current available ones give a result in as less as 5 seconds. The test time ranges between 3 to 60 seconds for different brands. Measurement range indicates the lowest and highest glucose value at which the meter will give reading. Most reading between 10 to 600 mg per deciliter. If the blood glucose is below this value, it displays low. If it is above this value, it displays high. The glucose value in milligram per deciliter or millimoles per liter is displayed in a small window. To convert milligram per deciliters to millimoles per liter, divide by 18. The factors affecting the accuracy of glucometer reading include coding and calibration of the meter, which is essential to avoid inaccurate results. The operating ambient temperature should be between 50 to 95 degree Fahrenheit and the operating humidity should be between 10 to 90 percent for proper results. If test strips are beyond the expiry or discard date, the test results become questionable. This is because the enzymes impregnated into the strips have a shelf life beyond which they may not be adequately active. Older photometric strips require wiping of the blood sample from the test pad after a precise timing. An early or delayed wiping would result in false glucose values. This problem has been overcome with current glucometer strips which do not require wiping the strip at all. Bilirubin, uric acid and glutathione interfere with glucose oxidase peroxidase based strip methods. Bilirubin inhibits these enzymatic reactions leading to falsely low values. Glutathione competes with the chromogen for hydrogen peroxide released in the assay. Interference by these substances can be prevented by deprotonization of the sample. Neonatal blood sample hematocrit may vary from less than 40% to more than 70%. 
plasma glucose concentration is higher than that of the whole blood on an average by 18%. Thus, a higher hematocrit will lead to false low glucose value and vice versa. Preparation of a plasma sample, example, in a heparinized microtube overcomes this problem. The control solution has a known amount of glucose. This range is printed on a test strip vial. When the control solution check is done, the result in the glucometer should match the expected result on the vial. Control solution check should be done once a week if you suspect the system is not functioning properly and after dropping the meter. The materials required for estimating blood glucose include antiseptic solution, example chlorhexidine or alcohol depending on the local facilities policy, clean gloves, a heel lancet device, example a 26 gauge needle, test strips and the glucometer. You can learn the procedure of glucose heel prick on the AIMS video. The following is this method of glucose estimation. Put on a pair of sterile gloves. Select a proper site for heel stick. Safest sites for heel stick are outer edges of the heel. Area between outer edges may be used if outer areas are accessed frequently. To avoid damage to calcaneus, posterior pole of heel should not be used. Position the heel between the thumb and the forefinger with the fingers behind the posterior ankle and the thumb over the dorsum of the foot. Apply a small amount of pressure to place the foot in a comfortable dorsiflexed position. Prepare an adequate around area around the heel stick site with antiseptic solution. Prick over the chosen site and allow free flow of blood. Do not squeeze excessively. Apply this drop of blood over the test square of the photometric reagent strip avoiding too little or too much blood. Switch on the glucometer and insert this test strip into the strip guide within 2 minutes of switching on the glucometer. Push the test strip till it goes no further. Glucometer will give the blood glucose reading within a few seconds. Note it down in a logbook for record. Now let us see what can be the possible solutions of common error displays on the glucometer. For a false low glucose value, the possible cause can be squeezing of the heel while sampling leading to hemolysis or if the test pad is not adequately covered with blood. So the remedy is that the sample should be free flowing and one should ensure that the test pad is fully covered with blood. For false high glucose values, the reason can be contamination of test pad with alcohol or too much blood on the test pad. Therefore, ensure adequate drying of alcohol after antiseptic cleaning of prick area. Do not take more than one drop blood over test pad. Ensure blood does not flow beyond the adsorbent area. If the glucose values are imprecise, it means that the glucometer is miscoded or time to washing and wiping the strips may be imprecise. Properly timing to wipe the strips and glucometer and test strip coding should be matched. There are certain limitations while using the glucometer which will affect the blood glucose values. Hematocrit as described before is inversely proportional to blood glucose values. Conditions affecting the circulation of the peripheries may lead to inaccurate results. For example, shock and use of vasoactive drugs. Low oxygen content of blood can result in false high values of glucose. Severe dehydration, repeated vomiting and loose tools will cause the blood sample to be more viscous resulting in false values. Arterial blood has higher glucose than venous blood. The magnitude of this difference varies with tissue glucose demands and is greatest under anaerobic conditions. Temperature, humidity and interfering substances lead to inaccurate results 
as explained before. However useful the glucometers might be, it should be kept in mind that reagent strip method detect only 85% of true cases of neonatal hypoglycemia and 75% of normoglycemic neonates. Hence, in all cases, it is absolutely essential that low blood glucose values obtained by a glucometer should be cross-checked by sending a laboratory sample, though administration of treatment should not be delayed. The following are the troubleshoots using a reflectance meter. If there is an error in the color of the strip, we can repeat the test with a new strip, make sure adequate amount of blood is applied, insert the test strip within 2 minutes of applying blood, ensure that the meter is clean and if all the above fails, call the customer services. Secondly, the problem can be there with the test strip itself. Check the test strip expiration date and discard date. Compare the color of the test strip confirmation dot to the color chart on the test strip bottle. If the glucose level is very low or very high, take appropriate precautions immediately. Check the position of the test strip. Clean the meter, especially the contact points, before retesting. Do not move the test strip after you insert it into the meter. If the meter shows problem with the optical system, clean the meter, especially the gray area inside test strip holder before retesting. Make sure the test strip holder is fully inserted into the meter. Wait for the insert test strip symbol to appear on the display before inserting the test strip. The electronic problem in the meter could be if you use bleach to disinfect the meter before retesting therefore thoroughly wipe off the bleach. Ensure the code number of the meter and test strips is matched. If there is no display on meter after inserting the strip, check the battery charge, check the battery position, ensure test strip is inserted correctly and completely and ensure meter or strip are not defective. If the test does not start after putting in the blood sample, Ensure that you have applied sufficient blood sample. The strip should be inserted before the automatic shutoff. Ensure that the meter or the strip are not defective using the control solution. What should be done to maintain glucometer accuracy? We should calibrate meters regularly, not expose the meter to excess heat, light or humidity. Use water to clean the meter. However, water should not get inside the meter case. Never immerse the meter in running water. Do not use alcohol, glass cleaners or any other cleaners to clean the test strip holder or the lens area. Test strip care should be done as mentioned before. So we have now learnt the enzymatic methods for glucose estimation, have high specificity for glucose and are the main mode of glucose estimation currently. Specifications regarding storage and care of glucometer and test strips should be adhered to. Individual problems in the machine may require to be addressed separately. We are sure if you follow these small precautions, know about the limitations of glucometer, you can really improve quality of care for neonates by preventing and treating hypo or hyperglycemia. Thank you for your attention.